buying a PC right now, building a whole new one, is an awful proposition with supply where it is, with uh, prices where they are, even the used market sucks since everything's out of stock. People are jacking up the prices on the used market. So what I'm gonna show you guys right now is if I was going to build a PC targeting 1440p gaming right now, first we're gonna start out with what I would want to buy, and then I'm gonna show you how I would adjust this if I actually had to buy one right now. With the caveat, I'm gonna say it right now, I would just not recommend buying one right now. I would wait until things are available in stock, but I understand that some people need to buy something now. So if you absolutely have to build a PC right now, I'm gonna show you what I would like to get, and then I'm gonna show you how I would adjust it to something that's actually in stock as of the time I'm recording the video right now. Okay, so what I would like to get, I would, and, and again, price is a concern here, obviously, right? So I'm saying I'm targeting 1440p gaming. Also, I'm targeting a budget that stays under $1,500, if at all possible, and as much under that as possible. So I'm looking at being between the $1,000 to $1,500 range, and lower is better as long as I get good performance. So that's kind of what my... Uh, parameters were for this. Now, what I'd like to get is a 5600X processor. This is a great gaming processor, and as long as you're not needing to do heavily multi-threaded productivity tasks, or doing some like CPU intensive streaming type of thing while you're actually gaming or something like that, this is fantastic and you don't need more cores than this for a gaming CPU right now. So that's what I'd recommend. And sure, you could also step that down if you wanna lower your budget a bit. I think that would be fine. Um, the other thing we're gonna have issues with, and I'll talk about what I would replace this with right now in just a minute. The other thing we're gonna have issues with is I would like to get an RTX 3060 Ti for the GPU for 1440p gaming. Um, again, obviously buying a 3070 or a 3080 or a 6800 or 6800 XT or something like that would be better. But the advantage of this is theoretically the Founders Edition card is $399, and I think that it gives you fantastic 1440p gaming for that price, and then it also does have things like DLSS, where in games like Cyberpunk that are pretty demanding, you could kick on DLSS to quality, you get a minor, vi minor visual fidelity hit to that, uh, but you do get much, much better frame rates. So I think this would be a fantastic 1440p gaming card uh, for the price. Again, I'm thinking about price. Okay, but we can't get either of those things. Now let me run you quickly through what the rest of this build is, and then we'll talk about, okay, so what would I fill these in with that's actually available right now? So I'm not locked on the rest of these parts. I just think these are reasonable ones for roughly this price. You could obviously replace any of these with a similar compatible part for a similar price. Um, I like this Noctua cooler because I actually have a Noctua U12S and I like it and it doesn't have any issues with RAM clearance because it's very small. Um, so that's why I like that. I'm not locked into this motherboard. I'm just grabbing a B550 that looked decent for a reasonable price. I like the B550 because it's a 500 series motherboard for my 5000 series Ryzen processor. I wanted to pair those up. And um, again, if we ended up going with a, uh, a card that will support the smart access memory kind of situation, um, the, having that 500 series motherboard might be an assistance to that. <laughs> anyway, um, so then for the RAM here, um, in my video I did yesterday, I said like, don't overspend on RAM to get too fast of RAM. But that being said, this 3600 kit is gonna pair up well with Ryzen's. In that video, I should have said a little bit more that on Ryzen's, it's got, especially the Ryzen 5000 series, the RAM speed is more and more important regarding the performance. Now, I still stand by the fact that if you're over 3000, and especially around like 3200 or something like that, it's fine. But up to 3600, you will see some performance increases, especially on these 5000 series processors. And as long as you're not having to spend a lot to get it, I recommend it. This kit is $75. You're not overspending to get this 3600 speeds. Um, and it's two eight gig sticks. I think 16 gigabytes of RAM is still perfectly fine. Um, although, you know, if you want to throw in a, a two more of these, you could go up to 32 gigabytes and um, also be very happy with that for an extra 75 bucks. All right, for the storage, this is not the fastest NVMe drive uh, that you could possibly get, but it's a one terabyte M.2 NVMe that should be reasonably okay for under $90. Cool. 
Uh, again, you could drop in a better one. Like personally, I like the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, uh, but that's going to be an extra, well, I think something like 30 or 40 bucks to get that. Uh, so like I said, you can get a better one, but this one seems fine and uh, is a good price. All right. Uh, the cooler, uh, sorry, not the cooler, the case, um, I just dropped in this Lee and Lee, uh, case looks pretty good for about a hundred bucks. Again, feel free to change that out for something that is more to your liking. That's not a big deal. And the power supply, again, I think a, a solid 750 watt 80 plus gold from a reputable brand is where you should go. I happen to just drop in this one from EVGA at roughly this price. I'm not locked into it having to be this, <laughs> okay? Um, this just seems like a fairly solid one for the price. Now, let's talk about how are we gonna adjust for this, okay? Well, here's what I, I ended up uh, going with. So I switched out the CPU for a Ryzen 5 3600, and the reason I did that is, well, for one thing, it's 200 bucks, okay? Uh, as opposed to like $330 we'd be spending on the other one. And so again, this is what you can actually get in stock right now. The other thing is it's compatible with everything else and it could be then sold and replaced with a 5600 if you wanted to do that upgrade path or even a 5800 or 5900 or, or whatever. The point is that this is fairly cheap uh, relatively and fits all the same parts and can be upgraded um, at a later date for a significant performance boost. That's why I went with this if you had to buy it right now. Also, this would be a good choice just if you wanted to lower the budget a bit. Um, that's just a solid processor still. Um, okay, and then what did I do with the video card? So this was really difficult. So for one thing, uh, even cards like, geez, I was seeing 5,600 XTs selling for this like almost $500 prices. Cards are just insane right now. This is the main reason why I'd say building right now might not be a great idea. Um, but if, if you had to, I did find this 5700 XT theoretically in stock for about 479. Now, here's the issue. If you actually go to this page, uh, it tells you that this actually is temporarily out of stock, okay, from Adorama. However, I was able to find at Newegg a similar card for $490, a different 5700 XT, that um, is actually in stock as of my time of filming. Uh, so I'm saying that that's kind of a stand-in for that, okay? Um, again, this card shows up uh, from Adorama as actually being out of, uh, as, as being in stock when you look at it PC part picker, but when you actually go to their website, it is not showing up as in stock for me. Okay, uh, where was I? Here we are. Okay, so those are the two things that I would change out. Now, what does this get us in terms of price? So we're coming in at about $1,273.90. So we can be under $1,300, and that's in comparison to this system, which is not giving us the correct total here because uh, these aren't available, so there's no prices available. If you added on $400 for the 3060 Ti, if you could theoretically get the Founders Edition at list price, and what are these, about 330? So let me just uh, add that up here real quick. That would be 1324. So this would be about 1324. And this, again, with our components that are actually in stock, is 1273. So this is about $50 less, but would get you significantly worse performance. However, it's not terrible performance. Let's actually talk about, again, what kind of performance could we actually get from this thing? So let's look at the, um, let's look at the graphics cards first. So this is from TechSpot, and I'll link this in the description of the video. Uh, if we look at their 18 game average, again, I was targeting 1440p. So 1440p, high quality, 18 game average, the 3060 Ti um, is at 114 average and 92 minimums, and the 5700 XT is at 94 average and 76 minimums. So let's actually think about the kind of performance we're getting here. So if I do 94 divided by 114, that's about 0.825. So the point is we're at pretty close to 82 or 83% of the performance of a 3060 Ti. Now I will say that that doesn't tell the whole story because the 5700 XT 
is not gonna have DLSS in titles like Cyberpunk, for example, that support that and are gonna get you a massive boost in frame rate. So it's actually worse. Also, it doesn't have any kind of ray tracing support, whereas on the 3060 Ti, you have the choice of turning on some ray tracing if you wanna take a massive performance hit to get the ray tracing. And again, the DLSS can help you balance that out. Um, to get you some playable frame rates with the ray tracing. So I'm not trying to say the 5700 XT is at all comparable to a 3060 Ti, but it was really the only reasonable card I could find at a reasonable price that was actually in stock that I could find in the hour or so I looked this morning, <laughs> okay? Um, so I would recommend maybe when a 3060 Ti or something like that comes in stock, to maybe sell your 5700 and buy one of those if you think that that uh, performance gain would be worth it. Again, you could upgrade that. Alternatively, you could just, I think the 5700 XT is perfectly fine to hold you off until maybe the next gen of, of graphics cards comes out uh, in a year. And maybe supply will be better then, maybe, <laughs> who knows? Um, now let's look at the CPU. What kind of downgrade did we get? So the 5600X was the one I wanted. Again, this is from TechSpot, an 11 game average. Now, again, these are at uh, 1080p. So I guess, I mean, we could, uh, the thing is when you're looking at your CPU stuff, uh, how should I put this? Because we'd be gaming at 1440p and not on the absolute highest end graphics card, don't expect to actually get these frame rate differences. It's actually probably gonna be pulled in closer because we're gonna be more GPU bottlenecked. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say here. But if you just straight up compared the processors themselves, the 3600 had this 165 average versus the 205 average on the 5600X. So if I do a uh, 165 out of 205, that gets us again, uh, we're pretty close to 80, 81%. So the point is for both the CPU and the GPU, we're getting about 80% of the performance uh, from the uh, actually in stock build that we could get compared to the build I would actually like to get. And we're getting that for about a $50 um, decrease in price, okay? So that's how those would compare. So if I actually had to build a computer right now targeting 1440p gaming, um, like I said, I'd probably do this. If um, I was willing to wait until things were actually in stock, I would do this. And again, we'd be getting that like 20% or so better performance uh, on average in most games. And again, also getting the DLSS and ray tracing ability. All right, guys, what do you guys think about my choices here? Don't pick apart the specific models here. If you're actually building this, look at what's actually available for you and what prices and look up the specific reviews. I'm just trying to get a ballpark figure for what these builds would look like. All right, I hope you guys have an excellent day and I hope uh, look forward to reading about your thoughts about all this in the comment section.